um, a, a movie that deals with, well, this is specifically about a girl going through puberty. I don't know who is it. So this is a, a Pixar movie specifically for 12 and 13 year old girls. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But look, I haven't seen the movie. Oh, okay. So he hasn't seen the movie. He's just up here crying about it and misinterpreting Pixar's entire business model so he can try to make it sound bad. So Matt Walsh decided to talk about Turning Red. I haven't watched his review yet, and we're going to watch it now. If it's, uh, if it's Matt Walsh, then we're prepared for something stupid, okay? You can tell from his phenotype that he is dumb. This is from The Daily Wire. Also, it says Turning Red is the newest movie from Disney Pixar that has some parents turning red with anger. Can we go to, like, triple speed, please? YouTube, petition for YouTube to add a three speed option when we're watching Matt Walsh. Um, the movie's rated PG, is intended for slightly older audiences okay. other Pixar films, especially since it deals with subject matter of puberty specifically. However, even considering the target demographic, some parents and reviewers are insisting the project goes a few steps too far. And what's worse, that it lacks the charm inherent to so many other Disney Pixar projects. I've heard this criticism. The movie was extremely charming. Don't let these, these fun sponges ruin anything, okay? Go watch the movie if you haven't watched it already. This mother's film as basically summarizing what we just read there, um, that it's just this obnoxious kid, disobedient to her parents. It, it doesn't actually have a message. Of course, you can portray that kind of stuff in kids' movies. It's been portrayed many times before. But Wait. the question is, what's the, what's the message at the end of it? Th there is a message. It's about how overbearing parents can contribute to kids rebelling and then they made up in the end. Well, there's a pretty cut and dry message here. Are, did he watch the movie? I don't think he watched the movie, guys. I think he's just mad at a kid's movie because it's a kid's movie and it still went over his head. I, I don't know. Um, and there is no, from what I've been told, there is no message at the end of this telling kids. Can I slow the video down a little bit? Oh, don't make me suffer. Okay, well, actually, you should respect. Your, your family is important. You should respect your parents. That's not the message at the end. In fact, the message is quite the opposite of that. And then also, apparently... Um, no, actually, the, the movie was talking about the line between respecting your parents and then also the way that your parents should respect you. Whenever these people get mad about that, just remember that they would prefer it to be that they're like Joseph Stalin and their kids are the peasants that they rule over. So this is a, this is a movie about a girl going through puberty and turning red. And the fact that she turns into a uh, red panda is a not so subtle metaphor for that. Um, and so that's part of the, the theme of this movie. And then you think, well, who, who is it actually? Is this is this a Pixar movie about a, a panda? Is this for 13 year olds? Is that who this is for? It's for kind of all ages, Matt. A 13-year-old could probably handle watching an animated kids movie about going through puberty portrayed in a very innocent and innocuous way. <laughs> I don't know. What else are you supposed to say? Because when you think about Pixar movies, like every other one that's been made, you immediately think, okay, well, this is for five and six-year-olds. Maybe other people can watch it too and enjoy it, but that's, that's, that's who it's for. No, actually, part of the reason Pixar is so successful is because they make movies that are enjoyable for younger audiences, but can also appeal to older audiences. Two minutes in, he's literally managed to miss the point of both the movie and, like, Pixar's brand. Who who listens to these people? Um, a, a movie that deals with, well, this is specifically about a girl going through puberty. I don't know who is it. So this is a, a Pixar movie specifically for 12 and 13 year old girls. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But look, I haven't seen the movie. Oh, okay. Okay. So he hasn't seen the movie. He's just up here crying about it and misinterpreting Pixar's entire business model so he can try to make it sound bad. Is this for real? Dude, it's really funny that these people are always like, you need to respect your parents. Okay, we're just innocent, concerned parents. Aren't it, isn't it the Christian conservative parents that literally spank their children? Isn't it the Christian conservative parents that hit their children if they don't abide by their dictatorship? God, dude, you people are fucking insane. Matt Walsh, go fuck yourself. I don't plan on saying it. Um, I've heard enough just from this that uh, I, I'm not- So you read a Daily Wire article. So you read an article from the company you work for and that's enough for you to determine you're not gonna watch the movie. By the way, this guy, wait, wait, where's the tweet? We are being led by the weakest and most fragile people on earth. Coming from Matt Walsh, the guy who is now triggered silly about a kid's movie he hasn't even watched. Any Marvel movie, it's all going to be like 99% people raving about how wonderful it is, and the movie is terrible. 
Um, what I what I do care about. What I okay, do that's too far. This guy is officially done. Holy shit! He just went mask off. He said Marvel movies aren't good. Holy shit! Especially before I put anything on for my kids, if I'm not familiar with the content myself, is um, you know you go to some of these sites and you look at the what are, what are parents saying about it? What are the parental reviews? And I find those to be most of the time pretty reliable. Yes, go and to the concernedchristianparents.com to read the review. You are sure to find the most objective truth there, my friends. This is all I need to hear. You know, if you've got a large number of parents saying, eh, this is not good for kids, it's got, it's got the wrong messages, it's, it, it, on top of that, it's just kind of loud and obnoxious and stupid. Um, that's enough for me to not show it to my kids. And I, I think we all need to be able A movie being loud is, do you only watch ASMR with your children? Is this Matt Walsh's ASMR arc? If you are against your children watching things that are loud, obnoxious, and stupid, then how do you justify the fact that you think your kids should listen to you? A loud, obnoxious movie? That's all kids' movies, dude. <laughs> Man, I'll say this again. I feel so bad for kids raised by chuckle fucks like this guy. And I think we all need to be a lot more discerning as parents what we let our kids watch. Especially when there's no real, like, sacrifice in being a little bit more discerning. I think there are a lot of parents who will just basically put anything on for their kids, and they, they almost never tell their kids no when they want to watch something. But it's, I mean, why? What's the, what's the downside? If you're more discerning... And I agree, actually. People should be more discerning. Especially the parents that allowed their children to go into a room with Matt Walsh and hear his uh, anti-transgender propaganda book read to them. I wish those parents had shown more discretion. I'm with you there, Matt. And you tell your kid, okay, well, we're not going to watch this movie. And it, it turns out that the movie was fine and they could have watched it. How are they hurt by that? They've still got a million other things they can watch. It's not going to hurt them. Even if you stop them from watching something that would have been fine. It, it doesn't cause any damage to them. But you let them watch things that they shouldn't be watching and you make a habit of that. And there is some... So the damage of being overly protective when it comes to the media your kids consume is that eventually they're going to reach an age where you are no longer able to restrain them and you're no longer able to warn them about the satanic energy behind turning red, and then they're going to go and watch whatever media they fucking want. So sometimes you actually teach a child to have more discretion by allowing them to watch some things that you might find questionable. Of course, that is going to vary on par based on parent to parent. Of course, there are some movies that are not appropriate for young children. There's just no question about that. But we're not talking about those movies, Matt. We're talking about a goddamn Pixar movie. Apparently, you think Pixar movies are made for five-year-olds. So why aren't you letting your kids watch it? By being overly restrictive, you make it so that once your children are no longer under your oppressive boot, they might go crazy doing whatever they want. For me, as a parent, when I'm deciding what my kids can watch, uh, yeah, I'm worried about what are the messages, what are the themes, what, are, what, what kind of things are we dealing with in this movie. I'm not going to put a movie about uh, puberty on for my six-year-old, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking... You realize that your six-year-old wouldn't understand that it was about puberty, right? She would be like, oh, it's a funny red panda. Ha ha, that's cute. And then you, as an adult, would understand what it's about. That's the point of Pixar movies a lot of the times. As I said, they appeal to younger audiences and older audiences. That's what leads Pixar's success, largely. Loud, bright noises or, you know, bright, bright colors, loud noises and all. That's all it is. And it's just obnoxious and stupid. And it... And it yeah, there might not, the, the moral messaging might be fine. It might be, as I said, innocuous, but it's making your kid dumber. Your kid becomes stupider. In, in <laughs> Just like the people that watch Daily Wire. People that are like avid viewers or readers of the Daily Wire, they too become stupider and dumber, okay? They all went to Jupiter to get more stupider, Matt. Seriously, can you imagine having a parent like this? They're like, Dad, look, the reviews are fine for this film. Parents say that it's just fine, Dad it's just fine. You know, there's nothing inappropriate. Yeah, but the movie's a little loud. It has a lot of bright lights. I feel as though the flashing colors are signaling to multiculturalism and diversity, which, as you know, children, is very bad. The movie's also kind of obnoxious, so you can't watch this. How do you reconcile the fact that you want kids to watch content that's age appropriate, but you'll simultaneously not allow them to watch a movie if it's not mature enough. <laughs> what? I guess you're just like the perfect arbiter. You're like Jesus Christ himself who just knows all. You're, you're the god of movies. Is that it? Ingesting all this stuff all the time, this constant media diet of dumb, dumb content. 
and it detracts from their attention spans. It makes them so they, they can't pay attention to things. It makes them so they, you know, they, they constantly need stimulation coming from a million different directions and all of that. that. That's enough of a reason for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip. From the wow. That was the most bland, uninsightful content I've ever watched in my life. What do the comments say? Watched it. It was infuriating that the kid says 13 year olds can do anything. Yeah, I was still watching cartoons and playing video games without any worries. My mom cooked me meals which were delicious. Learning to appreciate your parents is something that should be taught. Being a parent isn't easy. Oh my god, the persecution complex of this parent. <laughs> I watched this movie when it first started streaming. I was taken aback about how in your face the messaging was. Not to mention the overt sexualization of teen boys. Let me guess, this person's Catholic. Throughout the movie, when the protagonist would suddenly realize her intense feelings for a boy, I kept thinking about how this movie would be received if you reversed the sexes of the boys being objectified. So your imagined hypocrisy is enough to horrify you of the movie? Dude, these people are truly in another reality. I think if all these people like just saw a therapist more regularly, they would do so much better. Every time Hollywood makes a woke movie like this, I want to write a flip script. Again, the imagined hypocrisy is enough to trigger these people. Not to mention the propaganda. As we know, Daily Wire, that's <laughs> no propaganda there, my friends. It ends with them saying, my panda, my choice. <gasps> oh! I like Disney on occasion. We like the old stuff, but my seven-year-old son even agreed that it was inappropriate. He has good discernment. Oh my god. I can't tell who's more ab like who's more delusional. Matt Walsh or the people that actually take anything he says with even a grain of, of seriousness. They'll, they'll watch this review, get hella triggered, comment about how satanic Disney is polluting the minds of children because they made a slight reference that could be construed as having like a minor liberal undertone. And then they'll like this tweet and retweet it from Matt Walsh when he says we're being led by the weakest and most fragile people on earth. The hypocrisy, man. You just, I love it. It's actually quite entertaining. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.